Welcome to Rich Conversations. Let's talk about Nick Saban. Nick Saban was the head coach of the University of Alabama Crimson Tide football team. And while he was there, he won six national championships, nine SEC titles, and he also won a national championship at Louisiana State University Tigers. He wins. He's the best, he's the best college football coach ever. And I say that considering every era for what, what he accomplished during the time, I would say now we're in a new era and the best coaches of this new era will be the ones that navigate the college realignment and the NIL and uh, a new generation of young Americans who are, are raised on their phones and things like that. But Nick Saban... Uh, prior to this new era, the best, the best, he wins. And I thought I would uh, take this time to share what I've learned from him. There's a lot to learn and I'll summarize some of the main components of it. I would start with geography. Let's start where we are, right? Well, anyways, Nick Saban was born and raised in West Virginia. Whereas if we contrast that to Pete Carroll, who we, we talked about before, who was raised in Northern California, which is kind of exposed to that Silicon Valley spirit, the laid backness of California and West Coast, and also some Eastern philosophy. Now, I would tie together, I would connect Nick Saban and Bill Belichick. They're kind of one in the same in a way. Um, one being that they are really close and they, they'll have like off the grid, uh, rendezvous where they'll just meet up somewhere and then just talk football. It's all they do is live and breathe football. But both of them, both uh, Nick Saban and Bill Belichick are influenced by stoicism, which is a branch of Western philosophy, uh, since ancient times. And Stoicism is also something that, that I practice and read every single day. And with Stoicism, so if you, Stoicism is this philosophy where we use our, our, our reasoned choice, our rational choice, right? So that when approached with decisions and when life comes at us, we look at everything quite clearly and make an objective, objective best decision. Um, so we don't let certainly negative emotions influence us, sway us down. We just got to stay clear and stay focused and understand that we control what we can control, right? We can only control what we can control what is in our control, right? And so don't worry about this thing that we have, no, we have no control over. Just focus on what's in front of us, what we do control, and do our very best. And stoicism gets kind of a rap for being unemotional, which it can be, but it, you, if you live stoically, you will become a machine. You as a human being will be a very high functioning, high level individual. And so when you apply this to other aspects of life, like say football, you can see where this can breed success, right? So both Bill Belichick and Nick Saban are students of stoic philosophy which I am as well, which sometimes we have to, stoicism can get a rap of a little bit of grumpiness, which I kind of have fallen into a little bit and I need to pull back and just uh, breathe a little bit more, <laughs> more that way. But it's, um, as far as philosophies for living life, stoicism is, it is fantastic. So you apply that to the football field and I will say this, Nick Saban 
loves his wife, Miss Terry. So Miss Terry um, is such a huge component to his success where Saban likes to kind of be in the back a little bit, do his thing. She likes, she's basically the University of Alabama queen. She's the queen of Alabama. She likes doing all the social stuff and, and it's helped him navigate all the aspects of being a head coach that he doesn't necessarily love with um, meeting with university staff members and presidents and boosters and all of that. She was kind of a, a buffer uh, for him in that regard. And she really helped with that. So Miss Terry was a huge help that way with, uh, with him. The biggest thing I've taken from Saban and he would certainly be proud of me right now this year and what I'm doing, but it's about process. Now, before the Philadelphia 76ers turned process into kind of this uh, parody, process is about starting where you are and his teams would have national championship aspirations, right? What he would coach his, his uh, players to consider is the national championship is not today. This is something we are striving for. This is our goal, but we can't, we can't let that in the future affect what we do right now. And certainly this is part of the, the stoic approach, right? You can't control that. <laughs> what you can control is the action you take right now today. And so we're going to follow this process where every day we do the right things. We do the right things every game. We look at individually. We play that game. We be our best. And the end is going to be a result of all these steps that we took. The process that we followed. And... This is applicable for anything in life, right? When, you're, when you have a goal, you can't, you can't keep thinking about that goal every minute of the day and, oh, why is it not here yet? And uh -oh, I'm frustrated because I don't have this or that or I haven't achieved that. No, let's, let's break it down. Let's deconstruct it and identify what can we do today? to take a step in that direction, right? That's the process we're talking about with Saban. He's all about process. So that's the biggest thing I learned from Saban. Um, <laughs> something I, he, I remember him telling his players, his advice on sex, don't sleep with anyone who has less to lose than you. Great advice, Nick Saban. Legendary coach the best college coach of all time.